Hey everybody, what's up? As you can see, I'm not in my usual location. I'm in Colorado, visiting my son who is in uh, college here. So, we have stocks headed for new record highs, as I forecast. By the way, let's go back. August 8th, my original call that I put out on June 26th saying that would be the bottom and the buy window for the market based on the reserve flows as for months now I've been talking to you about that. Those are tradable phenomena. Uh, August 8th, the early morning of August 8th, we saw a low of 27.75 in the S&P futures. We did not revisit that at all. We had a couple of thrusts, I guess, down to the low 28 handle. We are now back above 3,000 on the way to new all-time highs. The 10-year treasury at 175, again. Now this comes, don't forget, this comes amid a backdrop of relentless forecasts of recession. We have had, I guess, a 30 basis point move up in 10-year bond yields uh, with no apparent shift in the economic outlook, at least the outlook of those who are calling for recession. Now, as you know, I was the only one, and I'm sticking by this forecast and this explanation, this theory, that it was the debt ceiling and the distortions of the debt ceiling, the distortions that the debt ceiling caused, which created the huge rally in the bond market and the drop in yields. It had nothing to do with any imminent recession. We're not going to have a recession. We are now at an all-time record high of government spending. You will see that come out in the news just as I reported several days ago that we are over $1 trillion on the deficit now. I'm the first one out to report that. I see those numbers every single day, whereas you will probably hear it in the news uh, sometime next week. And of course, it will be construed as an extremely negative development when in fact it's really something very positive. I told you that I mean, an easy explanation is that when the government spends more than it takes away in taxes, it is a net addition to the non-government's financial balances. That's not bad. That's good. But don't expect people to understand that. As a matter of fact, um, even the president, Trump, there were some things he said, I mean, really... <laughs> Today, he said the Fed ought to lower interest rates to zero or even less than that so we can refinance our debt and we ought to extend uh, the duration of our loans out to 50 or 100 years. So there is so much wrong in those statements. First of all, it is, it is conflating the government's finances with that of a household. Not the same thing. Apples and oranges. Households are not currency issuers. There is no refinancing of the debt. As a matter of fact, there is no debt. The treasuries, the 22 trillion of treasuries outstanding, which is often pointed to as the debt, is the total amount that the government spent minus what it took away in taxes. And that those are dollars, that is $22 trillion being held in the form of government securities called treasuries which themselves are dollars, they're nothing more than dollars, with a term, meaning a duration, and a coupon, meaning an interest payment. So those are like dollars that earns interest. There is no refinancing of the debt. I mean, I wouldn't even know how you would do that. Um, basically, that happens all the time when you think about it. Uh, redemptions, uh, the government pays back the maturing securities, and then rolls those over into new securities. As far as uh, extending the duration, that 
fails to understand that the sale of government securities, the sale of treasuries, bonds, whatnot, is nothing more than a reserve drain. And that could be accomplished by selling T-bills. You really don't have to sell two-year notes, five-year, 10-year, 30-year. And the idea of extending it all the way out to 50 and 100 years is ridiculous. It's based on a nonsensical understanding of what treasury sales really are. They're just a reserve drain. And you have to drain reserves because if you don't, what happens is it loads up the banking system with all those reserves, which are assets, and the banks need capital to finance that. That's why, for example, when you look at Japan, when you look at Europe, and the actions taken by the Bank of Japan or the ECB pouring trillions and trillions of reserves into their banking system, it has destroyed their banks. Look at Deutsche Bank. Look at most of the banks in Japan. They're, they're, they're functionally zombie banks. They just exist as clearing agents uh, because of the policies, these monetary policies, which are destructive. And for Trump to call for negative rates I mean, that hasn't helped in Europe. It hasn't helped in Japan. It's not going to help in the United States. It's a complete lack of understanding of how that monetary policy has been ineffective and, and what it does in a detrimental way. I mean, he just doesn't understand it. The problem with Trump and like so many other people is that they wrongly compare what the government's finances are to their own finances. This is why I always say it's very bad to have a businessman as the president. Government is not a business. It is not a profit-seeking enterprise. If government were a profit-seeking enterprise, it would own all the means of production and all the income and all the currency and everything else very easily just by virtue of the fact that it has ultimate and complete control over laws, over currency issuance, over the judicial system. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It would impoverish all of us if the government were run as a profit-seeking enterprise. The government is a creator of money and a taker of things and the private sector is a creator of things and a taker of money. That's the relationship. And to flip it around the other way, it would never ever work. Would never ever work. So, anyway. Everything's looking good. Tomorrow, oh yeah, tomorrow, ECB meeting. Uh, <laughs> there we go again. They're probably going to pump. The banks are pleading with the ECB, please, no more of this monetary policy. We don't need more reserves. We don't need negative rates. As a matter of fact, negative rates are a tax. They're going to do it anyway. So we'll have some more turbulence off of that when that happens. Ultimately, things will stay. You know, it's really amazing when you think about it, how the economy continues to roll along and the stock market continues to move up in the face of bad, bad policy. The only thing good going on is the high level of fiscal support. And luckily... Luckily, the majority of that is coming from things like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. I mean, things you would call socialist policies. They are the support, the pillars for the economy. And they keep growing. Uh, they'll grow to a certain point, but right now they're growing. All right, heading back to New York tomorrow. See everybody, bye. Oh, don't forget... Go to my website, sign up for a 30-day free trial of MMT Trader.
or zombie trading. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.